Hi, I'm Lillian, and today I'm out with Isabel, who is a retired deaconess who's going to tell me about the history of the Old West Kirk, now known as the High Kirk. Yes. <laughs> so, this is the original entrance to the church, but let's go back a bit and tell you some of the story of the church. Long ago, 1560s, there was the Scottish Reformation, and part of the rules of that was everybody had to go to the church. But Greenock was such a small fishing village, they had no church, and they had to walk to Inverkip. Fine in a nice day like this, but when it was wet, it was rather unpleasant. And eventually folks said to the laird, the owner of the land, John Shaw, would he build, build them a church. John Shaw was quite in agreement, but a wee problem. They had to have permission from the king, who was James VI, later James I of England, for permission. John Shaw was a courtier, which was good, so he had the ear of the king, and the king gave permission for a church to be built, as long as John Shaw paid for it. So a wee church was built on the shore at the West Burn, and everybody was delighted. They had their own place and they didn't have to have that long walk. The church grew and the town grew and eventually they needed another church for the town. And some, what was the only church called the Kirk of Greenock, it became the Old West Kirk. Fine, everything was fine for years. And then in the middle of the 1850s, the church fell into disrepair. The graveyard was hacked to the gunnels and they decided they couldn't afford to do anything with the building and it was closed. Another new church was built called, uh, it's called by Westburn Church up in the town and the congregation moved there. But people weren't very happy about that. They loved their old church and the history of it and a lot of local businessmen agreed with that they valued the history of the church and funds were raised, the church was refurbished and at that point some stained glass windows were put in. They were very modern for the day. Windows designed by the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, William Morris, Rossetti and a few others and everybody was happy until something else happened. about Harland and Wolf buying up a shipyard. They decided to buy Caird's shipyard, which was right beside the old West Kirk. They thought there was nothing to do but to demolish the church and expand Caird's. But the old West congregation thought otherwise. And after very long including the World War I, it was decided that they would pay to have the church removed to this site and they moved it stone by stone here. They reversed the entrance though, so this is why this is now the entrance and where we were before was the original entrance. I don't know why they did that, but it must have been a good idea at the time. So here we are. But unfortunately, if someone, higher authorities than me, <laughs> decided that this church was surplus to requirements and it has closed meantime. The Scottish Church's Trust has taken an interest in it, so hopefully they will maintain it and look after it. It's very valuable stained glass windows inside, which the director of the Victorian Albert stained glass section said has the best collection of pre raphaelite glass in the UK. So it's worth saving, I think. Is it a listed building? It is now a listed building, and it's now a class A, so it can't be altered. Mm -hmm. But if it's not cared for, it will just fall into disrepair as well, and mm -hmm. I don't know what will happen. Mm -hmm. So support it if you can. <laughs> there are several stones in the Old West Kirkyard. There's no burials, just the stones that were removed when the church was moved. Quite interesting ones. This one's quite nice. 
there was a, they call it disasters in, in 1825 and many people were drowned and this family were drowned and their servants and it's quite nice that the servants are mentioned in the, on the memorial. As we leave the church and walk along the esplanade, you'll see this big bear who's been putting smiles on residents' faces throughout the pandemic. He's been dressed up to raise money for charity daily. We've now reached one of the um, closes in the tenements and this is an example of what's called wally tiles, um, refers to the type of clay. And these were very decorative entrances to some, some residences. So also on the Esplanade, this is a drinking fountain memorial to John Galt. As it says um, above the stone, he was a Scottish novelist born in 1779. He was actually born in Irvine, but his family moved to Greenock when he was young. And he was educated here and had his first job here in Greenock. Um, he later moved to London and did travel very widely, um, always writing as he did so. And he became secretary of the Canada Company, which was a development company. And he founded several townships in Canada. Later on in life, he had a stroke and returned with his wife um, back to Greenock. And he's actually buried here locally. This is actually a very popular memorial um, stopping point for Canadian visitors to Inverclyde um, who, who like to come and see, um, see the fountain. This house was built by a local man called Alexander Bowers. Alexander was born and brought up here in Greenock and joined the Merchant Navy, where he became a captain at the age of just 20. The house was called Bowers Folly because it was the last house on the Greenock boundary. In 1883, his son Henry was born, but sadly, Captain Bowers died when his son was only four. For a while, the dev devastated Mrs Bowers moved the family to London where they had some relatives. They did, however, return to Scotland and later lived on the Isle of Bute. Harry followed his father's career and joined the Royal Navy and had a distingu distinguished career. He later joined Captain Scott's Antarctic mission, which aimed to get to the South Pole. It was here that Harry became Birdie Bowers because of his beaky nose. The nickname stuck from then on. The party went to the South Pole with Captain Scott, but found they had been beaten to it by a Norwegian team. They were met with atrocious weather conditions and ran short of supplies. One man died of exposure and the others wrote their letters home before dying too. Captain Scott called Bowers a marvel, the best of the best. Sir Gabriel Hood's Mariner's Home. Gabriel Hood was a local man born in Guruk and he became a civil servant. He rose in the ranks. He was a vice consul in Maryland and he was also a consul in various places. Finally, in Canada. In Canada, he met his wife and married her there. And then in 1825, ill health brought him home. He and his wife settled in Bath. When he died, after his will was distributed, they found a letter addressed to his wife and to his sister Frances, who still lived in Greenock, and it said, I would like a mariner a home for the entire Hill Mariner's Hill. some of their own money as well as some of the residue from his estate. And in 1850 the home was opened. It's for still retired seamen and has, all the rooms are called cabins and it's a very male orientated place.
Gabriel Mood's sister lived in Greenock and she was very much involved in the running of the home. She was very strict, didn't like smoking in the building, so she was very modern and she built a cabin outside the building for the men to go to smoke and not to spit. That was another of her hates. <laughs> um, she was very much a church woman too and when the Westburn church was building its steeple she said it needed a clock and she said I'll buy the clock. This is the last stop on our guided tour today. We are in the grounds of the Watt Institution, which incorporates the, the Watt Library and the Maclean Museum and Art Gallery. The sculpture you can see is a uh, George Wiley and cannons from the battery. And not quite sure about the big wheel, but I would imagine it relates to the industrial heritage of Inverclyde. That's us reached the end of today's tour of historical highlights of Greenock. Hopefully you've you've enjoyed the tour. If you would like to join us at the Bothy on a health walk, please do get in touch. Your contact details are at the end of the film. Thanks to Isabel and to Lillian for leading today's walk and for the really informative talk. Thanks. <laughs>